Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. I'm back for another video. It's been a while since I made a video. Didn't have a lot going on in February. It's been, we've been in a deep freeze here for a couple of weeks. Um, the past few days have been kind of nice, but we were in a deep freeze. We had a lot of snow and I really hadn't gotten out to pick up any cast iron whatsoever. But what you're looking at here are recent uh, finds that I did, made on Sunday. Five of these were a lot of skillets on an online auction and I've been using this auction house now for about maybe about a year or so. I started using them when COVID started becoming, you know, <clears throat> prevalent and we couldn't get out to source the, norm, the normal way. So at any rate, so these were part of a lot and then this was from an antique shop on the way home so without further ado i'll get into what i picked up and uh, go from there now with this here let me go ahead and turn on another light so you can better see uh there were two pictures on the listing two pictures and i normally wouldn't bid on this there were a bunch of lots that i was going for but people were just in bidding wars they were getting emotional and they were going back and forth and bidding each other to death and that's not the way to buy on an auction you have to kind of divorce your emotions from purchasing decisions because if you don't do that you're gonna overpay so this lot I really wasn't serious about because these were shown just like so and I could see a little bit of that word there if you can see that it says Taiwan so I'm never thrilled with Taiwan skillets but these all have market value it's just a question of as, as to how much if there's no severe damage so these two were laying there in one photo, just kind of like that. And in the photo, it was kind of up like this, where this skillet here looked kind of like it was bent weird on one side. It, it turned out not to be that way, but it looked kind of funny. I really didn't care, because then they had a second photo, and you had three skillets here. This one in the photo appeared to have some fire damage. You can see there, I think this is probably rust. It really doesn't matter. It's just a little number three. It's made in Taiwan. Uh, be a great little user for somebody. I don't know. Um, I really didn't care. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it because I wasn't going for the lot because of that. This is a fajita skillet. Uh, just a no-name, uh, heavy... It's uh, got some rust on it. I mean, I'm, it, I'm sure it's going to be fine. If you put it here, oh, it does kind of spin. <laughs> I really don't care. I mean, I wasn't going for that. I was going for this one, and it was very hard to see in the pictures. You can see. You can see the handle here, and I could see this. I could see an 8. I could see the external heat ring, so to me it looked like maybe an antique Wagner, possibly an antique Lodge, um, more like a Wagner, like a National, one of those types of skillets, which are fantastic. But as it turned out, as I looked closer at it, I lost several of the bids because I did, did not get into emotional bidding. I won one for real cheap, and I thought I would place a bid on this. This turns out to be a Volrath Ware number 8. And I was thrilled. I'm going to get more. I'm going to come back to this one in a minute. But I had seen that. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And at the time, it was $23 for the lot. And I thought, I really didn't care about the other skillets. Uh, those two, apps, I could care less about those two. Uh, these were interesting with the wooden handles. Uh, they didn't look bad, but I didn't know. I figured they were Taiwan, but they look old. They look vintage. The newer stuff... Uh, looks like this and a lot of the Taiwan or Asian skillets will have a thumb rest that's marked with several lines right there in the handle so that's a giveaway dead giveaway on the on the uh, not always no this one doesn't either and it's made in Taiwan but they're they're actually pretty good cookers from what I understand but anyways I thought I'd go ahead and bid so I put in a bid for I think I bid up to like $38, something like that, because I bought a an unmarked Volrath um, in Pennsylvania, back in Gris or Griswold territory, Erie, PA, 
and I spent about $38 on it, and it was a real good specimen, so I figured if I can get this, you know, for that or less, it, it would be worth it. So I ended up winning the bid. It was $27 for all of this. So you've seen these two pieces. Nothing to write home about, so we're going to go ahead and move them out of the way. Then we have, uh, let me move these over a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put the camera down so you can better see uh, what, what I'm working with here. Uh, we'll look at the Taiwan ones. I happen to see some online. And they had a pretty decent price on them, but they weren't restored. But they had wooden handles, and my concern is I don't like to strip these and put these in lye or vinegar. And I was hoping they would twist off. Well, this is the number, or this is a 10 inch, and it has a little assist handle on top. So let me move. I'm going to move these out of the way for a second and just show you this. I'm going to go ahead and put that off of there. I'm just put this on the stove. Go ahead and move this up, get that out of the way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that back down. This is the 10 inch Taiwan, and that's actually a nice skillet. You can see uh, the circular finish they have on a lot of their skillets. That's actually kind of good in that it will hold the seasoning. It'll be easy to season. It should look pretty good when I get it all done. But we're going to see now there's no movement whatsoever. It sits flat. I was concerned about this, a wooden handle. So they typically unscrew like that so you can take it out. And I remember I had a favorite, a, wear, a Pequa favorite wear waffle maker one time, and it had a wooden handle on it. And I did make the mistake of putting it in lye, and I think it pretty much, the handle was deteriorated, and the lye bath didn't help it. This has a long screw in it, so I'm going to take it out, soak it into vinegar, uh, clean it up, and then re reattach the handle. Here's the end of the handle, and that's the part that was against the skillet. So I'll just clean that a little bit. I like to maintain the vintage look of the Taiwan skillet. I think it might have some value to somebody. And then there's a product called, just for you guys to know, stop that. My cat always acts up when I'm trying to make a video. <laughs> anyway, uh, get the rest off of there. And there's a product called Anti-Seize, S-E-E-Z, or S-E-E-Z-E, -E, that if you coat this with that on it, it will make this much easier to come off again if you have to restore this again. That's kind of interesting. I didn't know that until I posted in the Facebook group. So at any rate, we'll keep these together for now. And this will be easy just to throw in the lye bath and the vinegar bath and go ahead and restore it. But it is a 10 inch skillet. It's in great shape. It has a nice assist handle. It would make a wonderful cooker for camping. So we're gonna go ahead and put that to the side. And then this one here is a seven inch. This one also has relatively no movement, a fantastic uh, cooker. It's got some rust and things on the bottom. Looks like some scratching here. Um, I'm just going to try to clean that up and smooth that out and refinish this one too. This did not want to come off, so I'm going to show you what was suggested to me. I'm going to go ahead and put this back. They said to take a screwdriver and to insert it through the eye of the handle and twist off. And by doing that, it gave me the extra leverage I needed to twist this one off as well. So I just wanted to show that to you for the sake of the video. I'd gotten it off. But I just did not want to put these into lye or vinegar. And again, it needs to be uh, cleaned in the vinegar soak. And I'll just wash the handle off. But I'm going to keep the handle like that because it kind of shows some um, integrity as far as of the vintage nature of the skillet. But it's a nice little skillet, no movement, doesn't appear to have any damage. So uh, I'm really kind of happy about that. I think they're going to make wonderful cooker, especially camping, because wood doesn't get as hot as cast iron. And they're long handles, so they'll be easy to grasp. I'm not going to show you the fajita or the small Taiwan skillet, but I will show you the Volrath. These are rare to find them marked. You usually find them unmarked, and they have a collectability when they're unmarked, but when they're marked, it's even better. I had to have this. I'm, I probably will sell it, but I don't know. It's got a lot of crud on it. 
You can see close up there, I don't know if you can see, uh, maybe put the skillet down, you can actually see it close up there around the side. I'll kind of pick it up and you can see it like so. And it's got some uh, old seasoning in here. It's actually in pretty clean condition. It's a number eight and there is no very, very tiny, tiny wobble. No spin whatsoever. It sits flat in my glass stove uh, cooktop here. So if that cleans up, I couldn't detect any um, cracks or anything. You don't know for sure, but I couldn't see any. This is wonderful. I'm so happy about that. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed for when I bring it out of the um, lye bath. And finally, on the way home, so all of those, hang on just a minute. Okay, I'm back again. So, but anyway, on the way home, I stopped at my normal antique mall in the area. Sometimes they have things, sometimes they don't. There's a guy in there that has a booth. And I found this. This is an unmarked, it appears to be an unmarked lodge. It is, let me try to get the lid around. You can see the, I just know it from just my knowledge of cast iron, but you can see the 10 and one quarter inch. It's a number eight Dutch oven. It's a five quart Dutch oven, I believe. And here's my receipt. And here is the bottom. It's actually very smooth. It's in real good shape. Of course, I'm going to strip it. And very little movement it does not. You try to push it, it doesn't move around. And I'm going to flip it over where we can see the bottom of it. And this one I paid a little over 34, which is excellent. I mean, people love these. This one doesn't appear to be marked. The bottom's in fairly decent shape. A little bit of rust. I'm not worried about that. It'll, it'll be fine. I've cleaned up a lot worse than this. I was happy to get this. It's a great Dutch oven. And we're going to go ahead and soak this stuff in lye now. I just had to get these things shown to you guys so I can get them into my lye bath. And would you believe this? I have the most... Look at this. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're not supposed to be up here. You need to get down. He's hungry. I haven't fed him yet. But he's, he's a porker. I mean, he doesn't look like it. You can't go in there. So I pick him up like a mama does. You can't stay up there. So stop. Sit down. Sit down. No, I don't have any treats for you right now. Not right now. I'm doing a video. Okay. Anyway, guys, sorry about that. But every time I'm on the phone, and he thinks I'm on the phone now because I'm talking, he acts up. He misbehaves. He claws the furniture. He's just... No! He never jumped up there before. I didn't think he thought he could. And all of a sudden, he found out he could today jumping up there. So I might have to lock him up at night. I don't want him going in here prowling for goodies I left on the countertop. So anyway, guys, a little over 30 for that, 27 for those. But I think uh, those two I should be able to do okay with on the, on the wooden handles here. Uh, those I don't really care about. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. And this one I was really excited to get. So that's pretty much it right now, guys. I will let you know how I fared with the other stuff. Uh, that I'm currently restoring right now, and then I'll be back later on a future video with these guys. Um, it pays to know your cast iron study up, guys, because when you go out there and you see something online, I didn't have, I did not have a lot to go off of. When looking at the auction, I took a chance. The stuff was good. Sometimes you just have to take a chance. You never know. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Please remember to give me a thumb up, leave a question or comment below. Please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for supporting my channel, and go make it a great day. Are you hungry? You want to eat? Hmm? You want to eat? Yeah? Well, see, here's the food. We have half wet. It is surf and turf. And we have half dry, grain-free uh, kibbles here. And that keeps it the male cat with a uh, non-blocked urethra. So we're going to try to get him to do a trick. Okay, it's right here. It's right here. I want you to sit, 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 paw, paw, good boy, paw, 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 the other one. 
Well, he does it better when I actually have the food down there. But we're gonna go ahead and put it down. This guy's a pig. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Talk to you next time.